Uh, slight problem. Hello? You, you don't live out here. You don't. Let's go. Come on. Come on. It's breakfast. It's breakfast. Come on, babies. Let's go. We're not eating Dad's fruit tree, Zelda. Come on. Come on. We're going back in. Come on. Oh. Come on. Come on. Let's go, breakfast. I do not even know how they got out. Come on. Come on. Let's go. We're going in. We're going in. Come on, girls. I'm going to have to go get food and... Okay. Yeah. Oh. That's out. Good morning. It's okay. Come on, come on, we're gonna go have breakfast. They look super interested in grain, don't they? Oh. I love that the dog is out and he's just like not minding them at all. Just like whatever. Uh, see, these guys know what's up because breakfast. Oh my gosh. I think I have everyone in. We're gonna let them all back out. <sighs> Happy Easter. It's Easter today. It has been almost two weeks since I've filmed a video. You guys have been getting your video a little bit behind, obviously, because I had filmed them and we took a week off unintentionally. The pig has completely broken his house, so I have to fix it today. And I have some sad news to tell you guys. Good morning. that I've explained why, they, why they're separated. We've had so many birth videos right in a row. So get her ready fed. These guys are mad that they're locked up again. I put them up late last night and so it was dark. I just didn't get the gate chained as closely as I should have. Apparently they've never done that. Really wasn't anticipating that being a risk. Obviously. I was wrong. Good morning sweet pies. chop has blown out the side of this house so I need to get this fixed today because the inside is not waterproof. I've got to put the shiplet back up, screw it all back in, and then screw these back in. So I'm just going to grab a drill and some screws and get that done this morning. It is way too hot for coveralls. We've been in Dallas for like, so it's Sunday since basically Wednesday and it's summer in Texas already. I would love to let them back out so let me tell you if I haven't, I don't remember. So you can see the top of Bean's head uh, and that red spot that's scabs come off. 
So that was from heat and waffles butting heads. Waffles is not the aggressor, but it's from Bean, kind of trying to put him in his place. There's just a lot that's happened in two weeks. Are you guys ready to be let out for the day? Are you? Did you already escape once? Did you already escape once? You have. friend so I don't know if you can really tell how much longer the grass is over here I really needed them to mow it down for a couple of days so we it's supposed to rain this afternoon when I go to work tomorrow we'll flip-flop back I don't know if you guys have noticed but we are short a goat and I have put off filming this video until I felt like I could talk about it and explain what happened. So Pixie is the last video that you saw give birth to Biscuit and Pancake. And we'll go back over all the baby goat names because I don't think I've told you guys all the baby goat names. So today is Sunday, a week ago from this past Friday. So it's been a week and a couple of days. Cece went into labor, or Thursday, it was a Thursday. Everything seemed fine. She was very late, like she was probably three days past when she should have had the babies, but she didn't seem like distressed or anything. I didn't really have any concerns about her at all. And Cece was our, our white and black goat that uh, is Tink's mom. She labored pretty hard for about an hour and a half. Pushing wasn't making a lot of progress, but finally I, I checked her a couple of times. Everything seemed fine, but I finally found felt two hoofs and she pushed and pushed and pushed and just didn't make just didn't make any progress. Uh, so I reached in and I could feel feet, but I could not feel a head or a butt. And the head, from what I could tell, was like twisted over and just in a position in which she could not deliver the baby. He was, I don't know if it was boy or a girl, I didn't check. Giant singleton and just completely in almost folded in half presentation, like four feet, a head and a butt all together. And uh, in the process of trying to get that baby out, either she or I tore her uterus um, in the process. My thought was after I reached in, I had way more room than I should have had. So I think she actually tore pushing the baby out. If it's not a terribly bad tear, you can take them in. They can do a hysterectomy and um, save the mama goat. The baby was dead by the time we got it out. My thought was that the baby was probably dead when she started delivering it. And that was why it came in such a bad position and why it didn't help her, why she had such a hard time. She was several days overdue. I think she was, I think it was stillborn. I had to call the vet out, it was late. She came out and she was like, the tear is, I mean, all the way up. Like we were pulling fat out of her abdomen. She could feel all of her guts. She's like, I don't, I think she's bleeding out. I just don't think we can save her. Um, When we called the vet, I knew we had probably torn her uterus with the amount of blood that was happening and... Mm. 
So we just made the decision to put her down so that she wouldn't suffer because ultimately she would have just bled out or, you know, worst case scenario, she would have developed an infection and died of sepsis and, and all of that. And so that was the decision we made uh, and it sucked. Are you gonna make it? Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. You're a mess. Your new mama is gonna love you. Maybe be slightly annoyed. Um, so it was really hard. Oh, thankfully I had all these videos in the bank and I didn't have to film immediately. Uh, and was able to take some time. Sorry, it's helping me. Uh, yes, I know, you're cute. Thank you. Oh my goodness. Thankfully I was able to do that and take kind of a week off from filming, a week and a half, edit videos for you guys, <sighs> but it sucks. We'd had CC five years, I think, five or six years. I think we got her in 2017, 2016, 2017. I don't remember specifically, I'd have to go back and look. We still have Tink, her daughter, but I didn't, I've never retained a daughter out of her in order to breed. So that kind of ends her line here on our farm, which is a little bit kind of added sadness where I have girls, the possibility of girls out of everyone else. We have Tink, was very worried about how Tink would adjust because she uh, never left Cece. And because she was so small, Cece really protected her. But she seems to be adjusting well, um, better than me. It's probably the hardest loss uh, that we have had. Mostly because every time I've lost a goat before, they've been like very sick and we've tried to kind of bring them back. And so I've kind of known that it was coming, but that was very abrupt. She was a very healthy goat. A just really unfortunate set of circumstances. Could I have done something differently? But the more I went back and thought about it, I think she tore her uterus before I ever even touched that baby. Um, I think he was dead, he was very big, and I'm guessing it was a he just because it was so big, and tore her uterus on the way out because of how he presented. Jeremy always talks about it's like one of the reasons he has just never been an animal person is because they die. And it's like, well, everything in your life, every living thing will die at some point, and it's worth it to me to have however many years that I get with these guys to, you know, the, the loss is hard but I had a lot of happiness too, which is important. It's the worst part of all this. It's the hardest part, um, but it's part of it. You can't, animals don't live forever and I am not one that's gonna sell them um, in their retirement years so that I don't have to deal with death. I don't think that's fair. They're mine, they're my responsibility as long as they're here. Sell goats for many different reasons, but not because they are geriatric. <laughs> or sick or unhealthy. Once they're my responsibility, they're mine. And you just have to take the good with the bad. And this is just one of the hardest, absolutely hardest parts of owning animals, whether it's a dog or a cat or a goat or a pig, is that death is, is part of it. So yeah, I was glad I was able to take a week and a half off. We went on a little short vacation this weekend and it was nice to just get away from a while and kind of regroup and, and refresh. So let's update you on, and happier things, the new baby names in case, I don't think I've said any of the baby, the new baby names in the latest videos. So Poppy's babies, that are these two little black and white ones. So I named the girl Olive, and then this one Oreo. 
the boy. He didn't get this buddy because his owners want horns because all of their other goats have horns. And then I named Twiz this little blue-eyed buckling Andy's, like Andy's mints. You guys had some really good suggestions, but I wanted something kind of short that was easy to remember and say. And then the sticking with breakfast foods for Pixie's babies, we named uh, her buckling biscuit and her little girl pancake. And I do think they win the award for being the most flashy this year. Little Biscuit definitely is the prettiest. This grass is really long. That's why I've got them out here. I really need them to be out here for like three or four more days. The problem is the boys really need to be out of their pens. It's just not enough grass for them and there for now. So what we would do is leave them out today and we'll kind of flip flop during the week. If it's gonna be a really nice, really sunny day, we'll let everyone out. I'm hoping that Bean's head will heal and then I can let Waffles back in for a little bit. That's the first time that they have ever headbutt to the point that his head has bled. They normally don't fight with him and he is not a heavy hitter. So it must have just been Bean really got after him and it's probably because they've shared this fence with the girls. The plan is still to order another net to go across. Uh, funds are a little low at the moment because it was winter. We are paying a ton for feed and disbudding was really expensive this year. So between four or $500 a month in feed for everyone with hay and grain, and then I spent probably close to $1,000 so far on disbudding, and I have two more to go. So once that's done, we get paid for last month with YouTube and I start like getting the income from the babies, then I will buy another net. But right now I'm kind of saving my money to get us through the spring. The other thing that we've done in that week and a half was move the nets. But last summer we only had two nets and they could not keep up with the grass. I'm not gonna open it and let them out today, but I just am gonna show you the setup. They're not gonna come over here. They're gonna stay right there all day long. Is to do sections so that we can rotate them. This also makes it easier on us to mow the areas that they're not on. So we have this section and what we can do is pull this this little piece across, and then it opens this section, which is nice and long because they've been off of it. And then we have this back section. But you can see when you're trying to make pins how much space you lose. Like we had all of that space, and now we only have this space. Same amount of nets. And that's really because we're not using as much of this fence line. So this corner, if you can see, is not attached to anything. So it can just be moved in and then they can shoot out here, which is also grown up really nicely and all this needs to be mowed. But it is way too wet to mow today. And so keep them a week on this, rotate them in there for a week, rotate them out there for a week. This time of year when it's really wet and rainy, so it's almost like we have like monsoon season, we don't. Spring is always very wet in our area. They can kind of move around so that they're not pooping and eating on the same place every day. 